The Montreal Canadiens are the most unlucky NHL team that I've ever seen, and this season has really cemented just how cruel the hockey gods can be at times, because we had ourselves the news earlier today that Jesse Alonen has been, or excuse me, not Jesse, Yessi, because he is Finnish, right. Gotta remember, there is no J sound, the J in Finnish, it is why instead? So, yes, Yelonen has been called up from the Laval Rocket. He'll be suiting up for the Montreal Canadiens. Why? Because Christian Dvorak is now injured. Add him to the list of players that are not in the lineup at the moment. Brendan Gallagher, Sammy Niku, those guys are in protocol. Petrie, Anderson, Toffoli, Edmondson, all on the IR. The LTIR is graced by Shea Weber and Paul Byron, not to mention Carey Price, who is not on the team either. You also have yourselves Josh Brook and Joel Teasdale, who are on the season-opening injury reserve, too. This team is just wow. Like... I can't believe how bad it has gotten for the Canadians, and now Dvorak is out too, so, you know, everybody memeing around saying, oh, the Canadians, you know, the Lightning yesterday, you're not playing the Habs, this isn't the Game 5, Game 6 rematch you were hoping for, no, you're not playing the Canadians, you're playing the Laval Rocket. You're playing the AHL team because we have so many call-ups in the lineup right now. Hey, at the end of the day, the Canadians still went out there. They had themselves a lead. Sure, Corey Perry's goal with minutes left in the third to tie the game really did sting. And sure, the Habs ended up losing at the final seconds because Andre Pallad is Andre Pallad. But if you are a Canadians fan going out there looking for Shane Wright or looking for Savoy or whoever, looking for a top draft pick... This ultimately does help, and I get it, it's tough to see your team lose, you never want to see your team lose, but in some circumstances, it's more appropriate and more valuable, I would say, to lose rather than to win. Because the Canadians, had they won last night's game, okay, they're now a little bit better in the standings, and now the guys from Laval are a little bit more confident, but what does that really do for the team? Either way, we have ourselves a rumor that I wanted to go about here from Sarah Vailey in his Daily Faceoff article the other day, 15 trade targets as the market heats up in December. This article is indeed from last week, but it does have some pretty relevant information that I wanted to discuss over here. As per the Montreal Canadiens. Now, you know from the title and the thumbnail, you know who we're talking about in this video. New York Rangers property Vitaly Kravtsov. And I say property and not player because he's not playing for the team right now. Right now, if you take a look at Kravtsov and his AHL resume, the guy's out there with 8 points in 11 games. Four tractor Chelyabinks after being loaned over there following his refusal to go to the AHL's Hartford Wolfpack. The team wanted to keep around Libor Hajek instead of Kravtsov, and as a result, they sent him down, and he said no. He also said that he wanted to be traded because he doesn't feel like he's going to have an opportunity to actually stick around with the Rangers in an NHL role. However, he would be okay with playing in the AHL, should it be for another NHL organization. So a trade is coming soon, we just don't know when and we don't know where. However, this article on Daily Faceoff kind of highlights another idea that we hadn't really seen before with the Montreal Canadiens, as per Frank Saravelli. If we scroll all the way down to the fifth pick in this 15 trade targets list, you can see Kravtsov right here as the player of subject. Vitaly Kravtsov, right wing New York Rangers, age 21, contract, he is a pending RFA, making $925,000 a season. Here's the scoop. The ninth overall pick from the 2018 draft has been on loan with the KHL's Tractor Chelyabinks after refusing an assignment to the AHL in October. He's got five goals and one assist. Okay, this is kind of outdated. Since returning to Russia, new agent Dan Milstein has permission to find a new home for Kravtsov, but it has not been easy. We're told Ottawa and Montreal were among the teams interested. Now that Jeff Gordon, the man who drafted Kravtsov, is in control in Montreal, could a reunion be in order? The Canadians have three third-round picks, or perhaps an NHL roster player who might help New York's middle six with Sammy Blay out. Ha 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 ha, well, I'll tell you right here, Frank Saravelli, there's no way the Montreal Canadiens trade any middle six or top six forward over to New York because they got none that are actually in the lineup. Everybody's injured right here, man. And all the ones that are still there are definitely untouchables. Like Nick Suzuki, you're not trading Nick Suzuki, you're not trading Cole Caulfield, you're not trading any of these guys that are actually playing 
I mean, I guess Arturi Lekkonen is in there, and I guess Yoel Armia is in there, but still. The Canadians need more forwards anyway, because everybody that is in this lineup is pretty much from Laval, so you kind of do need some extra guys, and Vitaly Kravtsov is kind of a guy that if you wanted to say, hey, we need you right now. We have nobody. We have Michael Pazetta and Jake Evans and Laurent Dauphin and all these guys are scratches. Paquette and Perot are getting top minutes. We need players. It's a lot easier for a guy like Vitaly Kravtsov to look at that and maybe say, huh, you know what? Screw the KHL. I'm going back to the NHL. This team needs my services. They need the goal scoring touch and maybe it's going to cost like a few third round picks or something to get there. I don't know. It is kind of funny, though, how the point is brought up that Jeff Gordon was indeed the guy in charge when Kravtsov was drafted all those years ago. We know he is now the main guy at the top of the umbrella in Montreal, so seeing that connection over there, obviously we have seen this happen before, where NHL GMs who go from team to team end up acquiring players that they had before on previous organizations as well, because, oh, we're familiar with what they bring, we like their services, we like the style of game they play, whatever it is, we've seen this happen before, so I would not rule out the possibility that Montreal, who was initially, supposedly, already interested in the first place, might be in a position where maybe it's a bit more likely now. However, you do have to ask about the contrary, too. It was Mark Bergevin and that entire general management staff that was initially interested in Vitaly Kravtsov. So, with a new guy in charge, with the old guys being kicked out, do you still have the same level of interest? That's something that maybe, okay, now we have a new GM, for example. Another guy gets hired next week. Maybe it's Jim Benning. Hypothetically, okay? Hypothetically. I get it. Probably don't want to go out there and see Jim Benning at the helm, but we'll see. Hypothetically, he comes in and he says, okay, I don't really see a player like Kravtsov fitting into the vision that I have for this organization. Maybe the new management that comes in just simply doesn't have that interest. So... I don't know, it kind of goes both ways, because Gordon is the guy who is kind of in charge right now, but he definitely does have that experience with this player and acknowledging, okay, this is what he's about, this is what he's like. Maybe the entire thing with Kravtsov being pissy about his time in New York is enough of a deterrent for Gordon to be like, okay, well, this guy was kind of whack last time, he didn't want to play with us, he didn't really like the development path we put him on, he had all this crap to say about us in the media. No way am I acquiring this guy again. It was already a big enough headache in New York. I don't want to take that headache over here to Montreal, too. So, it goes pretty much every way, right? Would Gordon want to come back and get this guy again because he's familiar, or would he want to stay away because of that same reason? Would the management that is in charge want to go out there and say, okay, Gordon, we wanted this guy in the beginning. Now you're here. Do you like him? Give us your input. If you like him, we'll get him. Or they can be like, okay, well, we have a new management now. We don't even want this guy anymore. It's a completely different situation all around. It's a 180, I guess, but either way, talk to me in the comments what do you think about the idea of acquiring a Kravtsov. To me, it makes a lot more sense now, especially since there are so many injuries on this team. It would be so easy for Montreal to be like, hey, New York, look, we need players. We need guys to play right now. Here's a few draft picks. Give us Kravtsov. We'll call him over. He'll quarantine. He'll do his thing. And then he'll play for us because we need the bodies. No Toffoli. No Dvorak. No Edmondson. No Byron. No Gallagher. We need players, bro. Like, this is the most unlucky team I have ever seen. So, when it comes to desperate Desperation. This team has to be desperate at the moment, and maybe a trade for a Vitaly Kravtsov is the move, maybe it isn't. Let me know in the comments what do you think as to whether or not the Canadians should acquire a Kravtsov and what the price should be. Can you afford to go out there and say, okay, here's Yoel Armia. You want a big-bodied physical forward to play in your middle six? New York here, Armia. He's exactly that. Or is the argument of before still the case where it's like, yeah, you cannot afford to lose out on anybody anymore? especially roster players that you would essentially be replacing with a Kravtsov. It's about quantity, not quality anymore. This team is so depleted that you just need the bodies on the floor. That's it. Let the bodies at the floor, man. So, is it the draft picks? Is it a player? Is it a, I don't know, a prospect or whatever that you send over to New York for a Vitaly Kravtsov? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts and opinions about that. Rangers fans, if Montreal is as desperate as I am highlighting they are, what do you want to pry away from this organization in return for your Hartford Wolfpack failed experiment? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this with a shout out to As always, link will be in the description to the article that we have read. And bye.